everyone! Welcome back to Flavor Fridays. It's me, Emma, and today I'm going to make Sichuan wontons in a spicy chili oil. If you want to get notified on all of our new videos, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell. So the first thing we're going to make is our chili oil. Now there are so many different types of chili oil in China and all throughout Asia. Um, I'm going to slightly simplify it so it's much easier for you to make at home. And the first thing we're going to do is we need to infuse the oil that we're going to pour over all our chili flakes. I've got some spring onion. I've got some garlic cloves and I've got some ginger. I'm going to roughly chop this and then put it into cold oil and bring it all up to um, a gentle simmer all together. With my garlic cloves, I'm just going to peel them and then just chuck them into the oil hole. So just give it a nice bash, just in rough chunks like this. I'll chop my spring onions next. Now it's quite nice just to use the bottom white part of the spring onion because they have a stronger onion flavor. So I'll take the roots out and then I'll just reserve the white part of the spring onion and I'll leave the green bits to garnish my dish in the very end. So I'll set that aside. And then with the white parts, you can just cut them in half so they're a little bit smaller so that they're just something like this. And now with my ginger, I am going to peel it and then just cut them into thin medallions. Now, sometimes when I make chili oil at home, I infuse the oil for maybe 45 up to an hour. And I infuse the oil with things like star anise, bay leaves, cinnamon, um, garlic, ginger, and spring onions. And what else do I add in there? Um, I add um, some more whole spices, but that's optional. You can just simply bring um, a load of vegetable oil up to a simmer and then pour that over chili flakes. That would be your most basic chili oil. I wonder if the camera can catch all of the um, ginger juices that are spraying all over my face at the moment. So with my ginger, just nice thick pieces. Something just like that. So over here, I've got my School of Walk Walk with a nice round bottom. So it gets really hot very quickly, which is very useful when you're wok frying, deep frying, and also at this step when we're infusing our oil. So the oil that I'm using today is just a normal vegetable oil. That is oil that I prefer to use because it has no flavor, so it's a perfect carrier for things like spices and chili flakes. So I'm very simply going to turn my wok on to just a medium heat. It doesn't need to be on a high heat because you want the aroma of the ingredients to slowly infuse into the oil. So in a cold wok, I'm adding my ginger and my spring onions and my garlic, and I'm also going to add in vegetable oil just like that. I'm also going to add some dried whole chilies into the um, oil to slowly infuse. So I'm just popping them, they're dry, they're not soaked, going straight into the oil, just like that. I'm going to allow that to slowly come to a simmer. And at this stage, you can simmer it for half an hour, 45 minutes if you want to, but also just 10, 15 minutes is good enough. While my oil is slowly infusing, um, we are going to talk about the spices that go into our chili oil. Now, this dish is also called Hong Yo Chao Shou, um, and Hong Yo literally means a red oil. So this is a very important part of the final dish because we use quite a bit of it in the sauce. Now, where this dish comes from, Sichuan, they have so many different spices. Um, I've got just the essential spices that I think are the ones that you really need in the chili oil, um, give or take a few. So the very important spice in your chili oil is going to be Sichuan peppercorns. So for this, I've got a mix of green and red Sichuan peppercorns. Uh, you don't need to toast them beforehand because the hot oil will just immediately wake up your spices. I've got around equal quantities of both 
red and green peppercorns. Now, Sichuan peppercorns are unique because they're called mala, which means it has a numbing effect. So they're a bit more numbing than they are spiciness in your face. I'm also going to add some chili flakes and I'm just going to give it a rough grind. It doesn't need to be too fine. Woo! Oh. Oh. So I just um, coarsely grind the spices just to release some of the peppercorns, almost pop the peppercorn. Um, and then I'm going to add them into this glass bowl. I use any heat proof bowl, so glass or ceramic, because we are pouring hot oil all over these chili flakes. So I'll pop these chili flakes into the bowl. And I'm also going to add some sesame seeds. It'll give it a nice crunch. I'll add a small pinch of white pepper, a teaspoon of salt, and also a small pinch of sugar just to balance everything out. Now, once you add your infused oil, that will be your most basic chili oil. You can turn it into more of a condiment if you add sesame oil or soy sauce or other things like that. But for this dish, just sticking to plain old basic chili oil. So this is exactly where you want your infused oil to be. You don't want to take your ingredients any further than golden brown because you don't want your oil to have a burnt flavor. So with my spider, I'm just going to strain out all of those ingredients. And then I'm going to bring this vegetable oil up to a higher heat. And then I'm gonna pour all of it over my chili flakes. So I'll bring this up to a higher heat. You just want it to be nice and bubbling away. And once it's very, very hot, I can pour it into my heat proof bowl. Once you've poured the oil over all of your spices and your chili flakes, you want to let it cool down, preferably overnight, so that the oil has all of that time to absorb all of the flavor. Um, however, if you're just making this in a bit of a rush, then you can also just let it cool out for maybe half an hour, 45 minutes. So now that we have made our chili oil and it is cooling on the counter, we're going to make our wonton pastry. Now this step is optional. You can just buy wonton pastries instead, but making it from scratch is very easy and I'm going to show you how to do it. So I've got around 100 grams of dumpling flour here. You could just use plain flour. And I'm also going to add two egg yolks. Now, when I separate the eggs, keep the whites because we're going to add the egg white into our wonton filling. So cracking my egg, reserving the white, and I'm just adding the egg yolk. The egg yolk is what's going to give our wonton pastry that beautiful golden yellow color. It's very similar to pasta in that way. Um, it also gives our pastry a lovely richness. So this is my second egg yolk going in. I'll add a pinch of salt. And then I'm going to add a bit of room temperature water. Now, often when I make dumplings, I use hot water, but you don't want to scramble those egg yolks. So just room temperature water is best. Um, I'm going to pour some right into the middle of my dough. And I just like to use my hands. I just rotate the bowl and bring the egg yolks and the flour together. Once you've formed a craggly dough like this, you can tip it out onto the work surface and start kneading. Now, it's very handy to have some extra flour on the side to sprinkle the work surface to make sure nothing sticks. So I'll sprinkle a bit on the work surface and on my dough. Now, when I knead my dough, you push with the palm of your hand, the heel of your palm away from you, and then you lift it back. This is going to be a bit of a sticky dough because of the egg yolks, but just keep kneading um, and it'll get softer and softer. 
After around five to 10 minutes of kneading, your dough should look something like this. You know it's ready because when you poke it, it gently springs back. Now at this point, you want to give your dough at least half an hour to rest because later on, we're going to roll it out very, very thin to form those beautiful thin wonton pastries um, that they use to make this dish. While the dough is resting, you want to wrap it in some cling film or plastic wrap just to prevent it from drying out. So now that your wonton dough has had plenty of time to rest, we're going to roll it out into a really thin sheet and then we're going to cut it into small squares around the same width as a credit card. So you'll need plenty of flour for this because the egg, as I mentioned earlier, makes the dough quite sticky. So Use a pastry scraper or even um, a knife. It makes it really easy to lift the dough. So I'm sprinkling some flour all over the work surface and on top of the dough as well. I'm going to dust my rolling pin to make sure it doesn't stick to my rolling pin. And then I'm just going to go back and forth and roll this out into a big pastry. It might be easier for some of you at home to cut this in half first and then roll out one half of the dough. Make sure you move the dough around so that it doesn't stick to the work surface. I'm going to roll it out into a large rectangle. Once you've got a thin rectangle, something that looks like this, you want it really nice and thin. You can use a pastry scraper or just a regular knife and you want to slice these into pastry squares. Now you can make them as big or as small as you want to. Just looking at my rectangle here, I see about eight pastry squares. So I'm just going to cut my pastry in half lengthwise. Makes it a bit easier when you fold it in half. And then I'll slice this into smaller squares as well. It might be a bit easier to square off the sides so that you get perfect squares. But again, if you don't get a perfect square or if it looks a little bit funky, don't worry, while you're folding, you can easily manipulate the dough so that it looks nice and clean. When I went back to Hong Kong over the first lockdown, I made this dish for all of my extended family. I tried to teach my grandmother how to make this pastry from scratch. She did not have the patience for it, so I ended up making all of the pastry. However, she did eat many of these wontons after I made them. So now I've got a stack of wonton pastries. Make sure you dust a little bit of flour in between each one. And again, if it's not the perfect square, don't worry. Continue to do this with the rest of your dough until you have all of your pastry rolled out into squares. I've got my wonton filling here. It's already been marinating for around half an hour. I've got some pork mints, the fattier the better for that lovely juiciness. I've got some bashed prawns for that lovely fresh flavor and texture. And I've also got the classic finely chopped ginger and garlic. Now, in addition to that, I've also got some spring onion white. So the very white part of the spring onion that I've chopped up really small and added in as well. And then the marinade is classic. I've got some soy sauce, salt, white pepper, sugar, and sesame oil. Now, something extra that I do to make my wonton filling extra juicy is I make kind of a fake stock, a quick cheats stock. Now, what I have here is I've got some spring onions, Sichuan peppercorns, garlic, ginger, um, and some salt steeping in some boiling hot water. This way you get all the flavor of those ingredients um, without adding those ingredients into your filling. So now that the stock has cooled down, it's nice and cold, I'm going to drain it into a separate bowl through this tiny sieve, just like this. And then I'll add a few spoonfuls of this stock straight into that mixture. Now this stock gives your filling a lot of um, just that extra juiciness that you want in your dumplings. Um, and then give it a nice mix. 
Now we can start shaping and filling our wontons. Now with one square pastry, I want you to place it in the palm of your hand, usually the non-dominant hand. And sometimes if the pastry is too dry, then you want to add a touch of water all along the sides of the pastry. But since I'm using fresh pastry today, um, I don't need any extra water. So I'm going to add a teaspoon of filling right to the middle of my pastry. And this is a very easy fold. I'm going to fold my pastry in half into a triangle, sealing all of the sides, making sure I squeeze out all of those air sockets from the middle of the filling. And then once you've got a triangle like this, you're going to flip it so that the tip is pointing downwards. You're going to lift the two corners of the pastry and then overlap them one over the other so that the two points meet perfectly. Pinch, pinch, pinch. And then you've got your first wonton. And then repeat with the rest of your pastry. So after you have filled all of your pastry, you should have wontons that look something like this. So now we're going to make the sauce that the wontons sit in. This is where the money is. Now this sauce is a balance between spicy, sour, salty, and sweet. So the spice comes from that chili oil that we made earlier. The saltiness comes from the soya sauce, the sweetness from some sugar, and the sourness from Chinese black rice vinegar. Um, black rice vinegar has a really lovely depth of flavor, but if you can't find it, you can also just use apple cider vinegar or any cider vinegar would work. So in a small bowl, I'm going to mix together some soya sauce, some Chinese black rice vinegar, around equal quantities of both, or if you like it a bit more sour than more vinegar. I'll add a spoonful of sesame oil, a small pinch of dark soya sauce for a bit more sweetness and depth. And now I'm going to add some sugar. I'll add some sesame seeds. Now this is optional, but I think it gives it a nice crunch. And plenty of spring onions and coriander. And when I say plenty, I mean plenty of spring onions and coriander. And then give everything a really nice mix. Now the last ingredient in this sauce is that chili oil that we made. Now the more time you let your chili oil set, uh, the more flavorful the chili oil will be because that just means that the oil has had more time to absorb all of those flavors. Uh, after you wait a day or two, the chili oil will also become much more red because the spices would have settled. I just made this today, which I think will be perfectly fine in this sauce. You want a bit of the oil and all of the chili flakes and spices that you added to it. So around two spoonfuls and be generous. Maybe three. And then give everything a nice mix. Now that we've made the sauce, the last thing to do is to put everything together. So I've got some boiling water in a wok. I've popped a few of my wontons onto my spider. I love using a spider whenever I'm deep frying or whenever I'm boiling dumplings as well because it's so easy to lift them from the water. So I'm going to slowly lower them into the boiling water. They do not take very long to cook because it's fresh pastry and prawns, which are the main ingredient in the filling, cook very quickly. So somewhere between four to five minutes. Once the wontons are boiled, they're going to be served directly onto my serving plate. So at the bottom, I'm going to pour all of my sauce. So it's sitting on a bed of that glorious money sauce. And then I'm going to garnish it with some spring onions, some chopped chilies, and also some deep fried shallots, but that's completely optional. So after around four to five minutes of boiling, my wontons are ready. I'm straining them with the spider. Drain off any of that excess liquid. 
and then slowly add them into your sauce. Ooh, this is one of my favorite dishes of all time. Top it with some spring onions. Some chilies around the sides and some deep fried shallots. And there you have my version of Sichuan wontons in spicy chili oil or hong yu chao shou. Hong yu chao shou is one of my favorite Chinese dishes, so I'm so excited to give this a try. Um, with the wontons, you can make them any size like you would like. Sometimes they're served extra large, like mine are. They expanded like crazy. Usually they're like half the size. And sometimes they're really, really small, entirely up to you. Okay. Okay. Try to get all of the coriander and the spring onions. The pastry so soft and tender from the egg yolks and the filling because we made that cheap stock is so juicy and I know it looked like I added so many chili flakes to the chili oil but it really isn't that spicy it's the flavor and the aroma of chilies not just a spice in your face when I brought this dish to a family dinner all of my aunts and uncles were responsible for bringing one dish and this was mine because I am of the next generation, I was the last one to serve my dish at the family meal. But guess which one was completely finished? My dish. So I want to know what is a dish that you have to have with a chili oil or a spicy sauce of some kind. Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And I'll see you next time on School of Walk.